Hello, and welcome to The Valley Today. I am your host, Janet Michael. We are recording in person today, a little over a week ahead of when everyone in Radioland is listening, but we are sitting in the secret garden out behind the espresso bar on the Old Town Walking Mall in downtown Winchester. Winter Brooks is here with me. She's got her walk coming up in a few weeks. Winter, of course, many of you will remember. She's done the show with me before. She is the co-chair of the Stephen City Out of the Darkness Community Walk. She's also the Virginia Chapter of volunteer board member winter thank you for reaching out and wanting to talk about the walk i think this is a great way to get the community aware of suicide prevention and the resources that are available to so many of us that may need it here in the community thank you janet it's exciting it's hard to believe it's two weeks away we've been planning it for for 50 weeks now so <laughs> it's exciting to bring folks together and provide hope and awareness in our community. So tell me a little bit about the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. This walk is under that umbrella. Yes, it is. The American Foundation for Suicide Prevention is a voluntary health organization. AFSP, I'm going to use the initials there, is dedicated to saving lives and bringing hope to those affected by suicide including those who have experienced a loss. AFSP creates a culture that's smart about mental health by funding scientific research, educating our communities about mental health and suicide prevention. I have had several conversations, and most recently several conversations, with Rusty Holland from the Concern right. Hotline, and we always talk about how the topic of suicide is such a taboo topic that people are afraid to talk about it if they're experiencing suicidal thoughts or if they have a family member that they've lost due to suicide, and if that tabooness were gone, a lot of these issues would come to light and maybe not be as terrible as they are for a lot of families. Right, and that's what we work so hard, both organizations do, is just to, to remove that stigma so people will talk about suicide and their mental health, just like any other illness. Just if you had a heart condition, you talk about it, and we work really hard to remove that stigma. So how many years have you been doing the walk now? This will be our eighth year. Wow. So we're really excited. There's 13 walks in the Virginia chapter, and this will be our eighth. So it's on Saturday, October 8th. Give me the details. When is it? How do I register? Give me some of that, and then we'll talk a little bit about what to expect that day. Okay, again, the walk is Saturday, October 8th. The gates will open at 9 o'clock a.m., and the walk starts at 10 a.m. It is at Sharando High School. It starts at the stadium, and we will have an opening ceremony, and then we'll start with the walk, and it will go through the Blue Trail in Sharando Park. And it's an easy trail. This shouldn't be something, some, oh, I can't do that kind of a walk. Everybody can do this kind yes, of a walk. Yes, it's 1.2 miles on the Blue Trail, and it's a lovely walk. We go around the lake, which in the fall is just beautiful. It just gives you things to think about, and it's not a hard walk. It's, I think most anyone can do that. Tell me about the ceremony, the opening ceremony. We'll start with the opening ceremony, introductions and welcomes. We have a board member from the Virginia chapter that will also welcome. And then the Sharanda Choir will sing, which is always lovely with Dr. Steve Jennings. And then we have a few little surprises. I don't want to spoil <laughs> it all. You don't have to give everything away. Yeah, I don't want to spoil it all, but we do try to add something new to our walk each year. People will benefit from that. Yeah, we do have a little surprise. It'll involve being the voice. I remember when we had our first conversation and you were educating me on some of the things that are related to suicide. You were talking about the colors and yes. what they represent when people come to the walk. Can you, for somebody that may not have heard that show, explain the colors again? The colors. This is part of our closing ceremony, actually, and it's the honor bead ceremony. When you first arrive at the walk, we have honor beads. There's nine colors, and each color represents the reason for your walking. Like for instance, I would wear white beads for the loss of a child, orange for the loss of a sibling, purple for a friend or a relative, silver for a first responder or military, gold for a parent. Blue, of course, supports suicide prevention, so everybody gets blue beads. Red for the loss of a spouse or partner. Green is most important. Green is for those who struggle. And we're always so happy to see if they're wearing green beads, we're so happy they're there. Everyone receives their beads. And the folks that we have that give them out, we don't just pick them up off the table, whatever your color is. It's kind of a ceremony it, in and of itself. It's almost a ceremony. And we've been to walks before where the beads are just laying on the table and you just pick them out. But we have people who 
they give them their bead color, they ask for what color, and our folks just really take in, it's just re- kind of reverent, you know what I mean? Like, it's a very personal it thing. It is, and by the end of the day, those folks, they have given out over 500 beads, and they take that all to heart. So that's the very special part of our event. And then with the honored beads, we have a sand ceremony in the end. And I have nine people representing each color of bead. So they have sent me four or five sentences on why they're walking and who they're walking for and why this event is so important to them. So as they pour that color of sand, representing the color of bead that they're wearing, our MC Barry Lee, will be reading their words. So when all the sand is poured, even though we're there for different reasons, we're all united in the same cause. And it's a powerful part of our ceremony. And I seem to also recall that you do photos? We do. Throughout the park, we have over 100 pictures of people that we have lost in our community. People have sent me their pictures. I enlarge them and laminate them, and then we put them on yard signs. So as you walk through the blue trail of the park, you'll see the pictures of our people. And we also have the Key Club, who is painting rocks with inspirational things on it. So you may find the rocks there beside the pictures. The thing that has always struck me when you talk about this particular event is on the surface, you would think that it would be a very sad and somber day. But what you have always described to me is a very uplifting and hopeful type of experience that people that come to participate get to have that day. It is because after losing my child, any opportunity I can participate in to honor Stephen helps me on my healing journey. And this is one of them. We started attending the year after Stephen died 12 years ago in Washington, D.C. And from that point on, I look It's sort of sad to think this, but I look forward to that day. That day is all about Stephen. You get to honor him without feeling some of the pain. Right. Because you're remembering him and all of the good things. We're remembering them. And then just seeing that you're not alone on this journey. That's huge. As I speak at the walk and I look and see how many people are wearing white beads, there was a time when I did not know anyone who would be wearing white beads. So those folks we've connected and we support each other, we help each other, we share about our healing journey that maybe that might help them as well. And that's really important because so many times I would imagine people think they're going through this alone, that if they have lost a child or a parent or a sibling or a spouse or any of those types of things, that they're the only ones that are really experiencing what they're experiencing and being able to be there that day and look around and see someone else in white beads, someone else in purple beads and know this person knows what I'm going through right now has gotta be really empowering. Oh, it is, it is. And I think by the end of our event, I think connections have been made. And at the event also, which is, this is really good too, I just wanna point this out, is that through AFSP, we have International Survivors of Suicide Loss Day, and so we have information about that there. And we will be promoting that it's the third Saturday in November. And what that is, is survivors of suicide loss come together in your community And we have counselors there and things like that. But we talk about, because it's nearing the holidays, what helps others through the holidays. And we share about our experiences. And it's a great event. So we will have information about that there as well. Can I come that day and not walk? Or why would I come that day and not walk? It sounds like walking is the easiest part of the whole thing. It is easy. People have asked, is it a race? Do I could (laughs) run? And no, you don't have to do that. As long as everybody gets back in time for the closing ceremony, (laughs) you don't have to run. But a lot of people just stay on the track. Some people just choose to walk the track if they don't feel that they can do the blue trail. So of course, yeah. And there's bleachers there. So if you just want to wait, listen to the music because we do have a DJ and there's music playing all activities the time. and activities, things like that. Absolutely. Happening. We do have activities this year. Absolutely. You don't have to walk if you're not up to walking. But I should register. Yes. We do prefer if you register, it keeps the lines down. And we started this when COVID, Mm -hmm. just so that we didn't have long lines for registration, which this is the greatest thing now, because now we have QR codes on everything, which is awesome. (laughs) Isn't it great? (laughs) And once you register, you just come on in. And if you've earned a t-shirt, if you raised $150, then you can stop and pick up your t-shirt and then on you go. So I do recommend to register. And to register, you go to AF 
afsp.org slash Stephen City. It's very simple. Easy enough. And just so people understand, AF. SP is American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. Correct. So now if they don't, did she say S or F? Now they'll know. (laughs) Let's take a break. When we come back, I want to talk a little bit more about some of the colors. And I want to talk a little bit about the other side of this, which is the prevention. Ideally, you would love to have everybody come and not have to wear any color beads because people are not having suicide issues. So can we talk about that in the next segment? Sure thing. Okay, we're gonna do all of that when we come back. We are enjoying a lovely afternoon sitting out back in the Secret Garden at the Espresso Bar Cafe on the Old Town Walking Mall in downtown Winchester. I'm chatting today with Winter Brooks. She is the co-chair of the Stephen City Out of the Darkness Community Walk. Again, it's happening Saturday, October 8th. We're gonna get your registration details before we wrap up again at the very end. Hello, I'm Katherine Dobbs, a graduating senior at Mountain Vista Governor's School, and we're partnering with the local environmental nonprofit Sustainability Matters to help you help yourself while helping the planet. Here's your sustainability tip for the day. Plant native. Virginia is home to hundreds of beautiful native plants, and they're better for the environment than non-native ornamentals are. Because they're adapted to our climate and soil, native plants require less water, fertilizer, and maintenance. So, when you're buying seeds for your garden, grab native indigo, mountain laurel, and blue-eyed grass instead of exotic flowers, invasive shrubs, or turf grass. Our native birds and insects depend on these plants for food and shelter, so think of it as making your yard into one big birdhouse. Thank you for listening. This has been an ecologically exciting message from Mountain Vista Governor's School and Sustainability Matters, reminding you that together we can keep the river clean and the valley green. Welcome back to the Valley today. I am your host, Janet Michael. We are recording a week ahead of time, just so Winter Brooks and I could sit in the secret garden at the Espresso Bar on the Old Town Walking Mall in downtown Winchester. I'm gonna make Lenita give me a free coffee for all of the plugs that I'm giving her during this show. And you were raving about the chai tea, so she is checking all the boxes for us today. Winter Brooks is here with me. We were talking about the Stephen City Out of the Darkness Community Walk. It's happening on Saturday, October 8th. When we went to break winter, we were talking about registration, that it is very important because you want to have a head count. You want to have some idea of how many people are coming. But you also mentioned that if you get there and you have earned a free t-shirt because you've raised a certain amount of money, tell me about the fundraising part of this. Yes. Each individual, if they raise $150, you will receive a walk t-shirt. And on the back of the t-shirt has all of our sponsors sponsors on them and it also has some teams that met a certain goal like in the month of June and then the month of July and the month of August if they had reached by the month of August a thousand dollars then their team name went on the back of the shirt so that was kind of cool but yes anyone who does raise that hundred fifty dollars will receive a walk t-shirt and that makes it nice because it's very much like what some of us are traditionally used to walks being. We're right. used to getting those pledges and right. and it's another opportunity to have a conversation about suicide prevention when you're talking to friends and family and coworkers about the fact that you're participating in this walk. Right. And it's kind of fun this year. It's a really good color of purple and this is the first time we've had purple there always seem to be gray and blues and so this year it's just the most gorgeous color of purple but it does have all there together to fight suicide and I can't tell you how many times we go places we wear t-shirts everywhere and people stop what is that about so I I hope a lot of people are in their t-shirts it's one of those things and we touched on this briefly in the first segment as well Suicide has touched so many people in so many different ways. I love that people are willing to walk up to you, not even knowing who you are, and saying, tell me about your t-shirt. That in and of itself is a huge step forward. It is, it is. And I I really feel that in time, everyone will have a connection to suicide. They will know of someone or a friend of someone's. This is a very family-friendly event. You were telling me during the break, children are welcome. Pets, you should leave at home because whenever you get large crowds like that, it gets a little iffy when you're bringing the dogs right. and pets. Uh, yes, unfortunately, and being in the football stadium, pets are not allowed there, but... <laughs> football season is still going on. Still we going don't want on. to have yes. any of that happening on the field. Right. right, but it is very family-friendly, and we'll have a balloon guy there who makes the animals for the kids, face painting, And something new that we're doing this year, I'm excited about, there's a story, it's called Gizmo, and he's about a little dog, and we're gonna have a storyteller there reading the story. And the story is for ages five to 11, 
and they're invited with their trusted adult to join them in the middle of the field and it teaches the children about mad and sad. Kids don't know about anxiety or depression but they do know what it feels like to be mad or sad and so this cute little story about a dog we're going to be sharing with the kids before the walk actually starts so that's something. And that's something else that's important too when we're talking about bringing this out into the open is when you have smaller children in a household and they've suffered through a suicide loss, it's hard to, how do you explain that to the children? And they see a wide range of emotions from maybe their parents or someone else. This is a great way to get them some information and some education for you and for the child. Right. It's a great little story and I'm excited to be able to share that with our community. So I do invite families to join us and we'll have other activities between that nine and 10 o'clock hour before the walk actually starts. We have a Remember Me banner that we invite everyone to sign if they wanna leave a message to their person. That will be there and the Remember Me banner is carried by the team who raises the most money. So Uh that will start our event. And we will have some flags there that you can, I wrote hope on mine, I'm all about hope, but you can write a message on these little flags that will wave at the end. And there's other events there to fill that hour. And that reminds me, you have a sign that floats around? We do, hope. Like I said, hope is my favorite word. And we do have a hope sign. Let's see, right now it's actually in Newmarket. It just left Navy Federal Credit Union and it has been floating up and down 81 from here to there for the last month and a half or so. And that hope sign will be at the walk as well. It's a great backdrop for teams to have their picture. We'll have photographers there. So gather your teams together and have your pictures taken. Let's go back for a minute to the different colors of the beads. You mentioned that green is for someone who's currently struggling and that you are very grateful when they come and they put those green beads on, you're gonna have resources yes. available for everybody that's coming regardless of their color, but it's, I feel like, particularly important for someone who has the courage to put those green beads on right. to know that they have resources available at this event for someone to talk to. Absolutely, and another color when you said green is teal, and that's if you are like a caregiver for someone who struggles, which is another really Mm -hmm. difficult position. And yes, we will have resources there. We have Concern Hotline will be there that Saturday, Family Preservation Service, Blue Ridge Hospice, NAMI, and Northwestern, as well as AFSP resources as well. They will all be there between that nine and 10 o'clock hour. You can just float by all of them. They'll have people there to help you. And this is a great event for that kind of thing because it does allow you to keep some semblance of anonymity if you're still just not comfortable. But they're there for everybody that's there and everybody that's there is suffering in some way or inspired because of in some way. So it's okay to stop at any one of these tables. Absolutely. There's no judgment. This is like the biggest judgment free zone you're probably going to find right. in all of the county for the entire year. Right. We always have bracelets. We always have pins. And that always helps get people to your table. Oh, bracelets. Everybody loves bracelets, right? And so it's great to have all those resources there. And what would you say to someone that's listening now and they have lost a child or they've lost a spouse and are sitting at home listening thinking, oh, they can't possibly understand what I'm going through. I assume you would encourage them to come out that day? Oh, absolutely. It would be hard if it was just a real recent loss, of course. But, you know, I would recommend that if they reached out to AFSP and because we also have something that's called Healing Conversations. And that's like if I were to hear that someone had lost a child and they registered with AFSP under Healing Conversations, I would eventually get that information and I can reach out and and it's not that I'm a counselor because I'm not, but it's just peer to peer. And I would reach out, hey, do you want to meet and have coffee? Or if it's not somebody in my immediate area, you reach out with a phone call or Zoom. Now we have Zoom. (laughs) Right. And I've done that many times. And so that's really a good thing that AFSP offers to help survivors of suicide loss. This is the Stephen City Out of the Darkness Community Walk, but I don't have to live in or be from Stephen City to participate. You have a pretty broad geographical area that you cover. We do, Janet. Our walk is in Stephen City. It's located there. 
but we extend as far as Newmarket and Shenandoah County. We do all of Shenandoah County and Warren County as well. We're really working hard to make a presence in those communities, as well as Frederick and Clark and Winchester. Winchester. But yes, we really are working hard to let folks know in those communities that we're here and we support them and we support all the surrounding communities. So tell me one more time, the date, the time, and how do I register? Okay, the date is Saturday, October 8th. The time, the gates open at 9 a.m. and will start right at 10 o'clock. And the location is at Sharando High School. We'll start at the stadium, we'll move over to the park, and then we'll come back at, to the stadium for the closing ceremony. And people can register on your website? On the website, AF afsp.org slash Stephen City. AFSP for American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. Yes. Fantastic. Winter, thank you for meeting me for coffee and giving me all the details. Oh my goodness. Thank you, Janet. I will be back tomorrow. I will have uh, breaking news for you tomorrow. So you've got to tune in a few minutes afternoon. I'm not going to give you any hints or clues whatsoever, but tomorrow you guys listening are going to be the first to know about something really cool and new that's happening in our community. So meet me back here for that just a few minutes afternoon.